How would it feel if every day felt free, fun, and fulfilling like a Friday? Our next speaker does this by creating collaborative conversations that connect company cultures and our world community. She is the best-selling author of Every Day is Friday, the ACT Blueprint for Leaders, and she's the founder of Metaspire Consulting. Her team has cultivated transformational change for some of the largest companies in the world, including American Express, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Hewlett Packard, saving each of them millions of dollars. Her work has appeared in Forbes Magazine, Harvard Business Review, Amex Open Forum, CBS, and iHeartRadio. Please welcome Nina Segura. I know that you're all here to cultivate a winning culture, and I promise if you stay with me, you'll have at least one thing you can do to break one of those barriers. You ready? Yeah, okay. A long time ago, before any of us were born, there lived a king, and he had no heirs, so he sent the squires out and the birds and all the bees and whatever else the kings <laughs> send out, and he said, hey, who would like to be the next heir? Come and present your case. And he created baths and wardrobes so no one had to feel like they were less than or better than anyone else. The great day came, droves of people came to the palace, and they ate bread, they drank wine, maybe a couple shots of gin, if you like me, uh, and they began to forget why they came. And it was then that the king looked over at the queen, and the queen looked at the king and said, the queen said, I got this. She said, remember who you are. Remember who you serve. Remember why you're here. Write this down. I will remember my inner queen and you all have one. So not too long ago, I was in a meeting with operations and technologies. Technologies was behind schedule, and they were explaining why things were taking too long and costing too much, and operations was super concerned because they've got margins to meet and customers to serve. And in five, four, three, two, one, just like that, time warp. I'm sitting, I'm five years old, watching my brother and sister fight over a piece of chicken at the dinner table. <laughs> you know, the first structure for cultures is families. When we walk into work, we don't walk in with ourselves. We walk in with the, our loved ones. We walk in with our perceptions of how we were raised. We walk in, right, with our inner children, maybe the ones that are wounded, maybe the ones that are afraid. Maybe the ones that are super curious and want to have fun. So I invite you now to just take an inventory. Think about when you grew up. What did you like about it? What would you change? You know, I grew up, my, I was my mom's little sidekick. I was also a little, oops, baby, after nine years. Catholic family, you might imagine. So I loved and learned to collaborate from her. I loved to learn to help people as well. And my parents were both musicians. So on the weekends, we would all sing. We'd gather around the piano. My dad would play guitar. It was sort of like the Partridge family. Come on, get happy. <laughs> if you don't know who the Partridge family is, I know I'm dating myself. Please Google it. <laughs> So I learned the value of harmony. I learned to listen for cues. I learned to think about what was valuable and what wasn't. And later we'll be doing an exercise so that you can start listening for those connections. When cultures create support systems, 
when people feel like they belong, that's when we can attract and retain the best talent. That's when we can form experiences for customers to have a lifetime of experiences with us. I also learned from my childhood, and maybe you can relate to this, to push myself really hard. Sometimes a little too hard. Sometimes I need to take my hand and put it in my heart, feel my stomach and say, ah, you know what, you've worked really hard. It's okay, you can go rest now. And sometimes when I'm feeling really disconnected and I'm going crazy, I do the same thing. I put my hand on my heart and my stomach and I just listen. And sometimes I'm like, hey, tell me whatever you have to say. I want to hear it all. And I wait. Sometimes I don't hear a thing. But I know I asked. I know I've stayed connected. The best leaders embody belonging. And the best way to do that is to take a hot minute and connect. You know, that story that I told you a, lo a little while ago, the initial part of the story, when I first heard it, was actually that the king waited for people to come and explain why they should be the next heirs. And the people came, they ate and drank, they forgot why they came, and they left. And I added the queen, and I'll tell you why. And you can look this up, but in the leanin.org, they've expressed a number of studies that they've done, and mostly women bear this this desire to help people know to belong, that they belong. They'll have conversations and they'll be allies for other people in the workplace. And so I'm asking you, regardless of how you identify, to think about one thing, that if you really want to attract and retain the best talent, think about being an ally for someone. First, yourself. Yeah. And second, someone else, right? Leaders create leaders. So it is said that 86% of the people who have an ally at work will actually say that that's one of the best places to work because they have an ally. Also, 53% of them say that they wouldn't leave because they have an ally. So if you want to attract and retain the best talent and you really want to cultivate a winning culture, think about those things. It sounds like we're really ready to tap into the power of cultivating a winning culture, and I'm super excited to share more with you. So if you're ready, just stand up and say, I'll remember my inner queen. I'll remember my inner queen. <laughs> Thank you.